The Paleozoic era spans from around 540 or 570 million years ago to about 248 million years ago. It is divided into six periods which are the Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous and Permian. In the Cambrian period, plant life consisted of primitive algae and seaweeds, while animal life consisted of invertebrates such as sponges, starfish and sea urchins. In the Ordovician and Silurian periods, true plants with a stem, leaves and roots developed. At the same time, there was an increase in the population of animals such as sea lilies, mollusks and sea scorpions. The Ordovician period also marked the evolution of the first vertebrate, the jawless fish, around 350 million years ago. For example, Cephalaspis and Hemicyclaspis. Next came the Devonian period in which plants grew in profusion and covered a large part of the... This period also witnessed a rapid evolution of fish such as sharks and rays. About 300 million years ago, in the Carboniferous period, pteridophytes such as ferns and horsetails dominated the earth. They were the first trees that thrived in vast swamps that stretch across the length and breadth of the planet. Over the years, these pteridophytes fell down and formed coal deposits. Meanwhile, in the Carboniferous period, around 350 million years ago, there were also fish with stout and strong fins who could move equally well on land as well as in water. These were called lungfish. For example, Neoceratodus and Protopterus. Another important fish of this period were the lobe fin fish, which later evolved as amphibians. Coelacanth is a lobe fin fish which was thought to be extinct earlier, but is now considered a living fossil. In times of water shortage, lobe fin fish probably made their way onto land and might have added insects and other arthropods to their diet. Modern day descendants of lobe fin fish are frogs and salamanders. The last period of the Paleozoic era was the Permian period in which amphibians evolved into reptiles. They laid eggs with harder shells that were able to sustain their own water and did not get dehydrated in the absence of water. Thus, reptiles became the first animals to successfully lay eggs on land and are known to be first terrestrial animals. In fact, for reptiles, water was no longer a source of life but a food source that provided hydration as well. Over millions of years, reptiles evolved into different orders. Each of these orders developed different characteristics which helped them survive in various environments. Today, there are four orders of class Reptilia. The first order is Chelonia, which includes turtles and tortoise. The second order Rhynchocephalia includes Tuatara. The third order, Squamata, includes lizards and snakes. While the fourth order, 
crocodilian includes crocodiles and alligators. Meanwhile, the plants that existed during the Permian age were ferns. Let us now take a look at the Mesozoic era, which extends from 245 or 248 million years ago to 65 million years ago. This era includes the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. In the Mesozoic era, around 200 million years ago, some land reptiles went into the water and evolved as fish-like reptiles. For example, Ichthyosaurus. Meanwhile, the land reptiles of the Mesozoic era were the famous dinosaurs with terrifying large teeth. They were a diverse group of reptiles which remained the most important terrestrial vertebrates for more than 160 million years. The tallest dinosaur, known as Tyrannosaurus rex, was around 20 feet tall. Fossils of T-Rex are found in a variety of rock formations. Dinosaurs suddenly disappeared 65 million years ago. They probably became extinct because they failed to cope with climatic changes or they may have evolved into birds. However, the precise reason for their extinction still remains unknown. It is estimated that birds have descended from reptilian ancestors such as Ornithischian dinosaurs during the Jurassic period of the Mesozoic era. In fact, birds became modernized in the Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era. The flora in the Mesozoic era was dominated by flowering plants and non-flowering plants such as ferns, pines, conifers, and cycads. Let us now take a look at the Cenozoic era, which began 65 million years ago and continues till today. This era includes the tertiary and quaternary periods. In the Cenozoic era, plants such as bryophytes and angiosperms flourished and continued to spread and diversify on Earth. This era is also known as the Age of Mammals, which are highly evolved vertebrates. They have a backbone which encloses a network of nerves which leads to a brain contained in a skull. Fossil evidence shows that the first mammals were like shrews. Mammals are characterized by vivid parity. That is, they give birth to young ones, have mammary glands, and the unborn young are protected inside the mother's body. The evolution of mammals was a slow process that spanned across 70 million years. Mammals were more intelligent in sensing and avoiding danger. In South America, there were mammals resembling the present-day horse, hippopotamus, bear, and rabbit. Due to continental drift in ancient times, land masses broke apart and consequently the land mass of South America joined North America. As a result, South American mammals were overridden by North American mammals. Continental drift also caused the safe development of the Australian marsupials. Meanwhile, there were mammals which evolved in water, such as whales, dolphins, seals and sea cows. 
However, the most successful evolution story was that of human beings as they developed language skills and self-consciousness as well. It is baffling yet true that the original human ancestors looked like present-day gorillas and orangutans. From those primitive times, the human species has indeed come a long way. Scientists explain the origin of mankind in an evolutionary perspective. In fact, the theory of human evolution is being constantly updated and modified based on new discoveries in many fields such as anthropology, paleontology and molecular biology. Did you know that scientists have grouped chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans and human beings as four member species of the hominidae family? Let us trace the evolution of human beings through the ages. The fossil evidence of the upper Miocene epoch of the Cenozoic era show that around 25 million to 9 million years ago, Dryopithecus, a genus of ape, lived in eastern Africa, Europe and Asia. The term Dryopithecus means the oak tree ape in Greek. It is representative of the early members of the ape lineage such as gorillas and chimpanzees. However, it lacked most of the specialized features found in present-day human beings and apes. For example, the canines of Dryopithecus were larger than those of human beings but they were not as strongly developed as those of the apes today. The structure of its limbs suggests that it walked like the chimpanzee, but used the palm of its hands to walk and did not use the support of its knuckles. Moreover, the skull of Dryopithecus did not have the well-developed crests and massive brow ridges as found in the skulls of modern apes. Another man-like primate that lived in early Pliocene epoch, of Cenozoic era, about 12 million to 14 million years ago, was Ramapithecus. Its fossils were found in Shivalik Hills in northern India and eastern Africa in the beginning of 1932. It was an ape-like creature. However, on studying of its reconstructed jaw fragments and fossils, we come to know that Ramapithecus was an erect biped with hands free. Therefore, it was considered to be a probable human ancestor. The members of the Ramapithecus genus were probably four feet tall. Fossils of man-like bones have been discovered in Ethiopia and Tanzania. These bones suggest that Ramapithecus, who had hominid features, had lived in Africa almost three million to four million years ago. The fossils found in the grasslands of East Africa narrated the next stage of the story of human evolution. They suggested that Australopithecines of the genus Australopithecus africanus lived here around two million years ago. The main feature of the Australopithecines was that they hunted with stones but were primarily fruit eaters. The first human-like beings were Homo habilis or the handyman. As their bones were similar to the other Homo species belonging to the hominid family. They lived in sub Saharan Africa between 2 million to 1.5 million years ago and had probably evolved from Australopithecus africanus. Homo habilis had stronger teeth, which suggests 
that they might have eaten hard plants and soft animals. The brain capacity was between 650 to 800 cubic centimeters. The next stage of evolution can be traced from fossils found in Java in 1891. These fossils are that of Homo erectus, which had probably evolved from Homo habilis. Homo erectus were human beings of medium stature who walked upright and lived around 1.5 million years ago. The brain of Homo erectus was smaller, around 900 cubic centimeters. While the teeth were larger than that of present day human beings, as they probably ate meat. Homo erectus flourished till about 200,000 years ago or even later, and then gave way to other species of the human genus. After Homo erectus, there were several stages that led to the evolution of Homo sapiens. Fossil evidence suggests that between 1 lakh to 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis or Neanderthal man with a brain size of 1400 cubic centimeters lived in Europe, Northern Africa and Eastern and Central Asia. The word Neanderthal is derived from the Neanderthal Valley in East Germany, where a Homo fossil was found in 1856. The Neanderthal man is supposed to be the primitive ancestor of the modern man. Members of the Neanderthal species used hides to cover their bodies and buried their dead. They were cave dwellers and good hunters and could use many tools. Neanderthal man was considered to be in direct line of ancestry of modern man. But they were wiped out by another primate, the Cro-Magnon man or Homo sapien fossilis, about 25,000 years ago. Fossils of Cro-Magnon man were discovered from the caves of northwestern Italy and France. These fossils suggested that the Cro-Magnon man had evolved between 20,000 and 50,000 years ago during the last glacial period. And their brain capacity was about 1660 cubic centimeters. The members of Cro-Magnon species were cave dwellers, good hunters, and carnivorous. They did not have any knowledge of agriculture and domestication of animals. The next species, Homo sapiens sapiens, probably evolved from the Cro-Magnon man between 75,000 and 10,000 years ago during the Ice Age. They began to practice agriculture around 10,000 years ago and settled in colonies. These were the formative beginnings of society, which slowly led to the rise of cities, empires and civilizations owing to constant human growth and evolution.